What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. This video is all about the dimple die. You guys have seen it all over the place. I'm sure you might even have dimple dies. They're not a cheap tool to have. I know when I started out, I bought them as I needed them. They end up being a little bit more expensive, but I was just thinking about it the other day. We could totally make that without a lathe. You could do it at home too. Grinder, welder, that's all you really need. I mean, I used a three inch angle die grinder and my welder and got all these pre-cut pieces of material and made this dimple die to do these dimple things. Let's get into the video. So the reason why we're making a dimple die today is because growing up, I didn't have the ability to buy all the tools that we can get today, like they weren't available. So this is gonna be just a simple way of making your own tool on the fly when you need it. And this dimple die is something that I actually had to do this. There was a job that I wanted to take on, this is years ago, and I didn't have dimple dies yet. And luckily I had a friend who could make me one because I hadn't thought of this at the time. And he made me a dimple die just for that job. So you don't have to start out with all the tools in the world to make it doing this stuff. You just need to be able to figure things through on the fly. And if a job can pay for me to have a new tool and maybe I make a little bit less at the end of it, that's worth it to me. So what I'm gonna do today is that we're making this dimple die. I've got an idea to do some bracing similar to the Model A. So I'm gonna make that dimple die that I used on the Model A for you right now. And I'm just gonna use chunks of uh, material that I got cut by Metal Supermarkets. I've been going to them for like 15 years. This is not a paid plug. I just love Metal Supermarkets because they've always cut exactly the size and charged me by the inch or, or whatever to make things awesome. I just go over there and pick it up and it's all pre-cut to what I need. So anyway, this is DOM tubing. If you don't know what DOM is, it's drawn over mandrel tubing. It just is a little bit more precise. It doesn't have the weld on the inside of the tube. I like using it in situations where you wanna slide one thing into another and they're partially designed that way because there is clearance. So this is two and a half inch outside diameter to 40 wall. So there's a 10 thou clearance in there to slip something in that's two inches. This is two inch with 370 wall which is just shy of three eighths of an inch. So two inch outside, three eighths of an inch, three eighths of an inch, that makes the inside inch and a quarter. So now we've got stuff that slips inside of each other and we're not gonna have to use the lathe to make these shapes. Now the centerpiece is inch and a quarter, solid, cold rolled. I did try to slip it into this. It doesn't quite fit. There isn't quite enough clearance there, so we'll have to grind it a little bit. But uh, my plan is we're gonna make the male and the female of the dimple die using these pieces. We'll start with the male side. So this is gonna be slipped into there. Now we've got two and a half inch with inch and a quarter inside. This is inch and a quarter. That's gonna slip inside there if you can imagine it. And that will be our top dimple die. I'm gonna have to bevel this as well. There's gonna be a bevel on there to extrude the metal down a little bit. I'm gonna do it with a grinder. Not everybody has a lathe, and I don't want any excuses out there. There's no excuses. You can figure it out with simple tools always. There's always a way. That's what I'm gonna do for the male side. The female side just has to have the two inch ID with another piece slipped into it to center that top. See, this will just drop inside like that. Then when our sheet metal goes on here, our sheet metal will have an inch and a quarter hole in it. This piece will slip through and center itself there. This piece that has the bevel on it will be lined perfectly to bevel this in. And that is a dimple die. That's my plan. The main part of this is gonna be grinding this perfectly and then grinding this down so that it slips nicely in between everything. Let's get to it. So in order for me to grind the taper on here, I want to mark where that taper is gonna end. You can make it however you want, but what I'm gonna do is if it's three eighths of an inch here, I'm gonna come up a quarter of an inch and that'll give me whatever angle that is. This is an artistic thing. It doesn't have to be specific. So this is what I'm gonna do. Oh, better file that nub off, it won't be flat. A little bit of a burr from them cutting it. So with that nice and flat, Make sure this is flat. I'm just gonna scribe. It's kind of tricky to hold, but it's nice and accurate. So I've got that perfect scribe 
all the way around. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold on to this, I'm gonna grind this away, and I'm just gonna make sure I don't touch this edge or that edge. Just remove the bulk of the material, and then we'll try and do it nice and even. And you'll see, it's good. You're not gonna be able to tell that I did this by hand when you see the dimple. I'll tell you that. Okay, I'm gonna remove the bulk of it with just a angle grinder. All right, so that's just grinding it. I just tried to stay away from that inside edge and this marked edge. You can still see my scribe there. There's a little bit of burrs that are kind of hiding it, but you can see I didn't bite into the scribe yet. So now what I'm gonna do is use my three inch angle die grinder and 36 grit and then just rough it in. Get it as close to this edge and this edge as possible and just try and be smooth with it. So one thing I just wanna point out when I'm doing this is that I'm trying to get close to this line, get close to this, this line, and if you get close to this line and then get close to this line, the only spot that's gonna be high is in the center. Make sure that you're using the flat part of the disc and try and make that as flat as you can. We're already getting pretty close, but what I'm gonna do is just finish this up in the 36 and then I'm gonna go over it in just 80 grit, same thing. Three inch roll lock, 80 grit. Try and get it as smooth as I can. It'll be pretty good. Be good enough anyway, 100% good enough. All right, well, let's have a look at that. I got really, really close to that scribe. You can still see the scribe. This side, it's pretty close. A little bit of 80 grit, and then this piece will be done. All right, pretty happy with that. That piece is done for now. So what's next is I've got to get this to slip inside here. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite fit, which I definitely thought it would. Most of the time, like I said, with DOM, uh, there's a little bit of clearance for whatever the next size is. And this is so close to inch and a quarter ID, I would have thought that it would slip right in, just like this does. Because this is just going to center it doesn't need to be finished perfectly. We can grind this and just have it a little bit sloppy and be able to slip in and out of there. Like I said, how perfect of a finish this piece is, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna grind it. I'm just gonna try it with the 80 grit and just see if that takes enough off of it. So it took a little bit of grinding, but uh, we took, I don't know, however many thou off of there until it slips right through our inch and a quarter ID piece here. So now our top die is basically done. This will line up like that. So that's gonna press the shape. That is going to center in our hole that we're dimple dying. The other thing I'm probably gonna do is just sand away some of these marks here. I might use the DA and just try and get everything nice and smooth. The smoother it is, like whatever surface this is, is gonna transfer into the material. If we've got the lines from the bandsaw cuts on the tubing, you'll probably see little tiny scratches because of that, as well as this. You might see a little bit, not that it really matters, but since we've got 80 grit on a DA, we'll just smooth them all out. And uh, so I'm gonna just weld it all together now and uh, make it so that you can see it work. Drill some holes and dimple dye some shit. Here's a handy little tool that you may or may not know about. It's pretty simple, it's called a deburring tool. This literally does what it says, it takes the burrs off of stuff. So say I've got a sharp edge on the inside of that tube, have a close up here, you'll see me peel it off. This tool literally just like peels it like an apple and takes away that burr. If 
you search on Amazon, you'll find them. There's other attachments for them as well. One of them being this handy little bugger. I've used it on videos before, but uh, this is for small holes and you can just stick it on a hole, turn it like that, takes the burrs away from the hole. There's that, I'm just gonna deburr these real quick. We'll get to welding. Okay, time to weld them up. I'm gonna start with the lower die first. So the lower die is very simple. All it is is just the surface that touches the sheet metal here. This edge takes the dimple. So it squishes the dimple right there. So that'll be a, a hard edge. There doesn't necessarily need to be much of a female side as far as this grind goes. When you push that down in there, it's gonna make a nice dimple and there doesn't really need to be a female side. It might make a little bit crisper of one, but I don't think you need it. But what do I know? I haven't made one before, so we're gonna try this. What you wanna make sure of is that this center piece here, that's gonna center this. So it's not actually getting touched by any sheet metal, this piece that I'm putting in, this little tiny donut, but it has to be far enough in that this piece can, can make its way all the way in. If I've got a quarter inch bevel on this piece here, this piece needs to be at least a quarter of an inch in. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mark that a quarter of an inch in. This is a handy tool that I didn't know I had until literally just now. There's some boxes of stuff I haven't gone through from garage sales, but that is gonna mark the inside a quarter of an inch. Definitely doesn't need to be this precise, but So I'll drop that in, keep it away a quarter of an inch. And then I'm gonna weld that backside. And because this is a little bit shy, I have room to weld. So a couple of tacks first. Watch your eyes, sweetheart. It is, it is the kind that shoots at you. I'm gonna turn it like this so it doesn't shoot at Christina. She moves over. Yeah, that's funny. Whew. It's just hot. <laughs> okay, so that's the bottom die. Super simple. Next, I'm gonna drop the pin in just so that, you know, the pin doesn't get hammered past the bottom of the bottom die. That's where we're lining it up right now. Now this piece, I'm gonna slip on, but it drops in a little bit too far. You wanna lift it up so that there's enough room that 16 gauge sheet metal could slip in there. I could actually grab a piece of 16 gauge, just one sec. So I want this to be up enough that 16 gauge sheet metal fits in. That's how high I want to tack this piece to the center. So, I'm just gonna leave it in there and give her a tack. Eyes, everybody. Step one of the top die. This has the right depth. We have our bevel on there. I'm gonna weld around this. I might just tack it first, actually. Okay, so the next part of this is this die on the ground, this die sitting in here, and then this outside piece. Oh, looks like a bit of spatter to knock off right there. Just gonna knock that off. Okay, now this is our outside piece. This ended up arcing through, made that a little bit rough, so I'm just gonna give that a quick hit. Now this again. Oh my God, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. It doesn't matter, but I meant for this to be the bottom die. <laughs> and for this, see this thickness was gonna go here. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Same shit, different pile. Okay, so now this has to be up a touch. 
so that the thickness of the metal can fit in there. It just means that I'll be welding deep inside. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I made an idiot mistake, but uh, I'm just gonna cut this down a little bit so that I've got a better place to weld. Now that I cut that back down, we are good to go. Just gonna give this a big weld and then we'll try it out. Well, this thing's super hot and I'm super impatient, so I'm gonna super cool it in the bathroom. All right, well, here it is. I cooled it off, just did a big fat weld across the top. That's where we're gonna hit with our hammer or our press, but uh, that just locks all three layers together. And that is what we have for our dimple underneath. And I swear, I have this style dimple the manufactured ones that you just hit with a hammer or use a press that don't have a bolt that goes through. They look a lot like that. That's very, very close. There's our bottom die. Super simple. This is just going to drop in there and that's going to make a dimple. Let's grab a piece of sheet metal. I'm going to make a little piece of metal that we can throw some dimples into. Okay. I'll do three and a half inches. That'll give us half an inch of flange on each side. Quickly go chop that up. And mark a couple flanges to bend. I'm just gonna make like a little C channel type shape. Drill three holes in it. Okay, mark out some holes. It's another cool tool time. Automatic center punch. If you don't have one, you should get one. Basically, you just push down on it and then it makes the mark, so it's very easy. Just gonna give this a quick little cleanup. Make it make it smooth. The moment we've all been waiting for. Homemade dimple dye test. Okay. This type of a dimple die, especially in 16 gauge, you're either gonna need a BFH, a big hammer, or a press. This little hammer, we can try it, but I don't think it's gonna do much. I'm just gonna get, get the baby sledge. Earplugs, Christina. Carl earplugs. Safety shield. Okay, <laughs> I think that went over really, really well. You can see I've got a little bit of a ripple on the edge here and that is because I'm an idiot and uh, made these flanges a little bit too close together that this didn't quite fit in. 
I mean, other than that though, it worked exactly how I wanted it to. Look at that. Check those dimples out. They're nice and smooth. You don't see any weird marks, you know? This is the surface that our die touched. That's this touching that. So the surface, you know, we just sanded that smooth with 80 grit. This is beautiful. I think that's awesome. It works exactly how it should. This was, you know, I don't know exactly how much it was. I should have probably tallied that up for you guys. Wait a minute. How much was it? We had for the 3 8 thick, two inch OD slash, you know, 3 8 thick, sort of two inch OD, one and a quarter ID. That was $6 for both pieces. The half inch piece I got metal supermarkets to cut and this piece, which is inch and a half long. The two and a half inch by quarter, which is this outside piece, which we didn't quite need as much, so it would have been cheaper, but this piece was five bucks or $4.80. This piece was $9.60. So that piece and that piece. This piece we cut down though, so um, you probably could have saved some money there. So I would call that 10 bucks. So maybe 10 bucks, six bucks, and then the cold rolled round bar for the center was $4.30. So we're talking about 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks in materials and they pre-cut it for me. I mean, a $20 dimple die that you could use over and over and over again for the rest of your life, it's solid steel, and you get the joy of making it. I think that's pretty sweet. Yeah, that's it for this one. I'm gonna use this to make something. You guys have been asking me about the inner bracing of the Model A and how that all happened. I know it looks like really complicated, but it's not. It's something that you can do too. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to do that in a future video, either the next one or the next, next one. While I got you guys here, I do wanna give a shout out to another, <laughs> another YouTube channel, Lee Grant. He's on YouTube, LG Speed and Custom. Ooh, let me just double check that. Hold on. I, well, I'm not super prepared, but I was thinking about him, so I, I wanted to say hello. Hold on. Just wanna make sure it's Speed and Custom. Yeah, it is. I knew it. I was right. I was right. Okay, LG Speed and Custom on YouTube. He's a local dude. He's just starting out. He's all about traditional hot rods, race cars, all that stuff. Early Fords, really talented metal worker, and he's just starting out on YouTube. So go give him some love because he's gonna do good things. I know it. So thanks everybody for watching Make It Custom. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications, comment, do all that fun jazz. And uh, hopefully you get to make yourself a little dimple die for the next project. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a good one. What is up, everybody? I just wanted to say thank you so much for all the comments and everything. I know I'm behind on comments, so I'm really sorry. I'm trying to like every comment that's not a question and trying to answer it, everything that's got a question mark. We're doing our best. As you can see, we are moving. This is the new shop. It is a huge mess right now. <laughs> We're trying to get moved in here, but we got a place to work. So that is uh, a huge bonus. I just want to say thank you to everybody there because YouTube is, is helping us out and uh, we enjoy providing content for you guys. Seems like you guys are enjoying it. So thank you so much. And uh, thanks to all my friends helping with the move, including this guy right here. See him picking his nose. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot. Here's the next video and we'll catch you on the next one. I will catch up on comments as soon as I can. Thank you guys.